You know, you start having thyroid symptoms, you go to the doctor, they give you a diagnosis, you have a hypothyroid problem, okay? Then you're put on Synthroid or some other medication to give you hormones. And then you ask your doctor, what is causing my hypothyroid problem? And they might tell you, well, your thyroid hormones are low. And you go, okay, all right. You go back home, you start taking your thyroid medication. And about a year later, you're wondering, I don't really feel any difference. My energy is still low. I still am overweight. What's going on? And then if you ask the question, what causes a lowered amount of the thyroid hormones, um, you may get answers like, well, we don't know. It might be genetic. There's still research going on. So it can be very, very frustrating because it's not about correcting the thyroid. It's about managing your thyroid levels. And if you treat the thyroid with thyroid hormones and you don't see improvements, the question is, is that the real problem? Or is that just the tip of the iceberg? And what I'm about to talk about is not meant to replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before implementing any of these suggestions. The only thing I'm trying to do is raise some really important questions. If you really get to the root cause of a problem, then the problem resolves. If you don't, and you keep managing the symptom, you're basically spinning the wheels and potentially creating a future problem because one of the side effects of taking thyroid hormones over a longer period of time is you're causing your own thyroid to not have to work anymore. And you're causing your thyroid to become lazy and it reduces the thyroid's ability to produce on its own. So it becomes very dependent on these thyroid hormones. And then the other question you have to ask is, okay, what does the thyroid produce? It produces T4, T3, as well as another hormone called calcitonin, right? Are you ever given that hormone? No, you're not. One thing to me that's very interesting about the thyroid is that I think really, and this is my own uh, opinion, is that it's a symptom of something else. It's rarely a primary cause. There's so many other parts of your body that can affect the thyroid that are really ignored. So I'm gonna increase your awareness of these other things that could be affecting the thyroid. One thing you need to know about the thyroid is that T4, okay, the main hormone that the thyroid makes is not the active form of thyroid hormone. It's kind of a precursor to the active form, which is T3. And the three and the four really represent the number of iodine molecules that are attached to this protein hormone. So when the body strips off one iodine, it becomes active. And 80% of this conversion happens through your liver. So if there's any problem with the liver, whether you have a fatty liver or it has cirrhosis or it has inflammation, that can affect the conversions. And so here you are treating the thyroid and ignoring the liver. That could be one mistake. The other 20% of the conversions happen in the kidney. So if there's any problem with the kidney, especially if you are a diabetic or a pre-diabetic or have insulin resistance, chances are you have a problem with the kidney and that can affect the conversion. You also need selenium, okay, for this conversion. You also need zinc for this conversion. And there's two other additional hormones that are very, very powerful in not only blocking the conversion, but messing with the production of thyroid hormones. And that would be number one, estrogen. This is why you see so many women start developing a thyroid problem right after pregnancy both hypothyroidism as well as hyper, okay? But most cases of thyroid are an autoimmune type problem where it's not really a thyroid problem at all. It's an autoimmune, it's an immune problem that is developed after either a stress event or a spike in estrogen. It just so happens that estrogen does control or help regulate the T cells. And the other hormone that I want to mention is this cortisol. If cortisol is too high, it basically paralyzes the immune system. And that alone can set you up for an autoimmune problem, including Hashimoto's, which is basically about 90% of all hypothyroid type situations. Now, since the great majority, like 90% of all hypothyroid problems are really Hashimoto's, then we should also talk about the gut because you have like 80% of your immune system that starts in the gut. So if there's any type of permeability issues in the gut, like leaky gut, something like that, certain proteins can be leaked into 
the tissue right beyond the colon and create this whole immune problem. And you can start developing antibodies against certain things. There's a big link between gluten, okay, gluten sensitivity, gluten intolerance, an allergy to the gluten, and hypothyroid problems, especially Hashimoto's. A lot of people, when they get gluten out of the diet, all of a sudden get relief with the Hashimoto. So that's a really important factor. I wouldn't just go gluten-free. I would go grain-free completely. So the other thing involved with autoimmune diseases, especially Hashimoto's, is you always have inflammation. And the inflammation is really what's creating all the problem, all the damage. So if you could just get rid of that inflammation, regardless of all the other things that you do, you would see dramatic improvement in body function. And one natural and very powerful substance you can take is vitamin D. Vitamin D is not really even a, a vitamin. It's a hormone. It acts like cortisol, but without the side effects. You usually have to take vitamin D in higher amounts, like 40,000 IUs, to get rid of the inflammation part of this autoimmune problem, as well as selenium. So those two things are essential for an autoimmune situation in general, as well as Hashimoto's. A hypothyroid condition can occur in men and women, but it's eight times more common in women. I really think because of the estrogen component, which I just talked about. Estrogen regulates the T cells, and that can set a woman up for an autoimmune problem. Also, like I said before, cortisol paralyzes your T cells. So a, a really important question is, when did you start noticing these thyroid symptoms? Was it after a stress event or not to rule out this cortisol situation. Let's just go through the early signs of hypothyroidism, okay? Number one, loss of the eyebrows, specifically the outer part of your eyebrows, okay? Number two, thinning of your hair as well as dry hair, all right? The hair just completely dries up and it starts to thin and you start losing your hair. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. All right, number three, you start developing a cold intolerance. You don't tolerate going into an ice bath for very long, okay? You don't like the cold, especially in the winter, but even in the summer, you have to always wear socks. Number four, your metabolism is so slow, no matter what you do, it just will not work fast. I would also focus on insulin resistance, okay? That's in another video, but the thyroid can definitely create a slow metabolism. Number five, weight gain all over. The type of fat is not necessarily adipose tissue. It's called myxedema. So it's a different type of fat, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but it's more like a spongy type, uh, puffy type fat. And number six, tired. Now, if someone's tired, that could be from so many different causes, but the thyroid will definitely make someone tired as well as depressed, okay? So you're gonna just feel low, you're gonna feel down, you're not gonna have that get up and go, um, unfortunately, because everything is suppressed with the thyroid. Now the question is, what can you do about it? Here's the plan right here. Number one, uh, find out the real cause of the problem. So you're gonna have to do some investigation yourself. Um, the question is, do you feel normal when you're taking these thyroid hormones? Like you went to the doctor, you're taking Synthroid. Are, are your symptoms normalizing? If they're not, then start asking questions because chances are it's not the right solution. Now, if someone tells you, well, it, you know, you've been on it for a year. Well, sometimes it takes several years. No, it doesn't. If something is going to fix the problem, it's going to fix it relatively soon. It shouldn't take years and years and years, but so many people get on these hormones and they don't really ever get better. And yes, they might be normalizing your thyroid levels, but is the thyroid hormones being converted properly? Is the problem really in the blood or is it in another location? That's the question. All right, B, you can do an iodine patch to see if you really have an iodine deficiency or not. You simply take a cotton ball, and you can get some iodine from the uh, drugstore, like 2%. And then you just apply some iodine to the inside of your arm or your thigh. And you can cover it up with a little patch. Okay. And then you basically wait for 24 hours. If within 24 hours, okay, you see no more uh, yellow patch, then you are deficient. Okay. 
If you still see it completely yellow, chances are you have enough iodine, okay? So you can kind of look at it and if it's fading a little bit, maybe you have a slight deficiency. It's not the perfect test in the world, but it can give you clues on if you're deficient in iodine. Another test that you can do for classic hypothyroidism is the Achilles tendon test. You can take a little uh, hammer, the one that you would check your uh, reflexes with, and just tap the, your Achilles tendon or get someone to tap it. Now, normally what happens if you're laying down flat and your foot is hanging down and you tap this a little Achilles tendon here, it should do this, right? So what happens with hypothyroidism is it'll do this, but it won't come down that fast. So it's that return action that's going to be sluggish. And that would be a good test to determine if you truly have a primary thyroid problem. Another important question is when did it start? Was it right after pregnancy, which then can tell you it's an estrogen problem, then you can do with that? Or was it after a stress event, and then you could manage your adrenals more with that? Or let's say you have a fatty liver. Well, you might want to then focus on your liver, not the thyroid, to get rid of the primary cause, okay? Number two, the uh, trace minerals are important, not just iodine, but selenium and zinc. So take a good trace mineral product, maybe sea kelp would be good. Number three, get rid of the gluten. In fact, I would get rid of all the grains. That right there might produce huge changes. And then the vitamin D in large amounts, like 40,000 I use, simply because most thyroid problems are autoimmune related. There's one more little secret I'm gonna tell you. It's called Thyrotrophin PMG. It's by a company called Standard Process. And you didn't have to just seek it out to try to find it. You take one of these before bed over a period of three months. It seems to work really good. And what happens when you're taking this, this is actually extract, like an animal extract of the thyroid, okay? And so you're taking this before bed, it goes into your stomach. And apparently, it's never been proven, but this is the theory, your immune system, your antibodies that are attacking your thyroid uh, start attacking that as a decoy, leaving your thyroid alone for a period of time so your thyroid can kind of come back. It's a really cool strategy that may potentially help you. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to do the Achilles test, I put it up right here. Check it out.